Here at Microsoft, we believe that anybody, anyone, can come up with an incredible idea, an incredible new business. But there are four steps that really help you take that idea to its fruition inside the enterprise. And we're gonna be talking about that today. First off, what is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is as necessary for a company's future as swimming is for a shark. If you don't do it, you'll die. Entrepreneurship is acting like an entrepreneur inside an established company. And it's a way of creating value with new products, new lines of business, and new ways of running existing businesses to drive value. What I'm going to go into next are four important steps about taking your new idea or your new product or that insight that you have to the broader company as a whole. While many of these steps, in fact, the first three, are very similar to what you'd be doing outside of an enterprise in building a startup company, the last step is, is unique to entrepreneurship itself. There is something different about starting a business inside the ecosystem of an enterprise or, or an existing business. And we'll go into those details. Come along with me. The first step is, who is your customer? Now, if you're, if you're like me, you've probably had a bunch of small ideas or, or maybe even potentially big ideas that you kind of hold close to the vest that might be a way of solving a problem that you yourself have. For example, I, I uh, meet a lot of people in what I do. I, I like meeting people uh, both inside the company, both you know, at, at my kids' dance recitals, um, at the local restaurant or pub. And uh, it's great to remember those people and things about them um, as I meet people in the world. And so sometimes I'll take notes about them just to remember a little bit about who they are so that I can you know, provide a better experience as a friend, as, a, uh, as an acquaintance, when I meet them again next. So let's say I come up with an idea for a personal contact relationship manager. It's just for me, right? That might start out as a little diary. It might start out as a little Excel sheet. Maybe I even turn it into a small program that I myself use. Maybe too then I show it to one of my friends and one of my friends says, wow, that could be a great product or a great business. That's great, but who really is my customer for that? First, I have to form a hypothesis on who the customer for this thing that I think is really cool and very useful for me is. So for a personal CRM, who might that be? It might be, it might be somebody who has to deal with a lot of people in their day-to-day -day life, perhaps a barista, right? If you remember everybody's order who comes to you every day, chances are your tips are going to improve. Maybe it's um, somebody in HR or somebody in, in finance who has to also work with a lot of people. Maybe it's somebody who's uh, like my, perhaps my 11 year old who's trying to remember all of her friends' names, even though she remembers a lot of uh, the relationships that they have and the things that, it, that they do. Uh, it's just kind of keeping all of that information concrete there. The way that I start this out is I form a bunch of hypotheses. Well, it might be this person, it might be this person for whatever product that, I'm, that I've uncovered or the idea that I've come up with. Then I go find the people and actually talk with them. Now, I can go to back and talk to my friend who thought that, I, that uh, app was a great idea, and he, he might be in the market for something like that. He might be a potential customer for me. But it's entirely possible, too, that, well, he's just my friend. And as a result of just being my friend, he told me that my product was awesome. So it's important that when you go out and test your hypothesis of who your customer might be, that you go and you seek out places where you might not uh, know the person, or they're, they're a brand new person. Uh, there's a concept in the world of entrepreneurship called the mom test. You know, uh, for some of us, anything we bring to our mom and say, hey, mom, do you think this is cool? Your mom's likely going to say, yeah, that's cool. But it won't be a true test of whether it actually is or not. So once you found a bunch of potential customers and proved or disproved your hypothesis in that way, you can amend your hypothesis accordingly. So let's say I take that, that personal contact manager and I, and I show it uh, to a couple of friends and a couple of other people and they say, wow, that is an awesome thing, but I wish it could do this or I wish it could do that. Maybe I haven't found the right potential customers for it yet. Maybe I don't wanna change my product roadmap, the thing that I'm working on here, to fit the needs of the people that I've talked to thus far. So then I can change my hypothesis. 
Maybe it isn't the uh, kids at the playground who are trying to remember their friends' names. Maybe it isn't uh, people like me who are just extroverts and maybe nerdy extroverts at that who want to keep all this information about the people that they meet at restaurants or a bar. Maybe it is something a little bit more formal, like a, um, a business development person, say for a recruiting firm. Ah, now there's somebody who has a vested interest in keeping a lot of information about people in a very systematic and useful way. So maybe that's my customer. Let's assume that. On to the next step. How is this idea a solution for that customer? Does it solve a pain point for the recruiter who is gathering all these people for potential roles that that recruiter is aware of? Well, let's see. So I take, I take my product, remember? My, my client relationship manager product. And I ask a bunch of recruiters, hey, does this solve your problem? Notice how in saying that, I've already assumed that they have a problem in the stuff that they're doing, that they have a problem in uh, that my product purports to solve. That's kind of leading them into my product rather than asking them about the universe of problems that they might themselves be encountering. So it's important that you ask the right questions of the customers as you, that you're testing out for your product as you go through these motions. Maybe what I do is I go to that recruiter and I say, hey, recruiter, you deal with a lot of people every day. How do you keep track of that information? And maybe they'll tell me and that would be great. Maybe they write it down. Maybe they wish they had a better solution. Making sense of those answers and kind of understanding what they respond back to is, is a great way of understanding how to build out your product to meet that particular need. Even more importantly though, than the things that you ask them directly, it's how you observe their behavior. Maybe they'll say, yeah, I write everything down in a notebook and then I transfer that notebook at the end of the day into some sort of client relationship manager that my company requires me to use. But then maybe observe them, you know? Maybe it's not, maybe they don't do it at the end of every day. Maybe they do it at the end of every week. And small things like that can help change your product roadmap so that it doesn't just solve the problem that they think they have or that you think they have. It solves the problem that they actually have. This makes your product a very powerful thing. So it's good if you do that once or twice, but the best way to build a very strong product in this case is to build an iterative feedback loop so that you're asking a broad set of people the same kind of questions, getting the same kind of information back, and adjusting your product roadmap accordingly. This ensures that your an original idea, remember that, that customer client relationship manager that I built to keep track of the people that I meet at the bar so I can have better relationships with them, is taken on a whole different light in the context of the questions that I've been asking the people who are really the true audience because there isn't enough people like me perhaps to be an audience for a product like that. Third step, what is your business case? So maybe do what, I like my recruiting friends, they're, they're great, they're good people, but I really want this app just for the people at the bar who want to keep track of the friends at the bar and I'm just gonna keep it that way. And so I decided to start a business around that. And I go up to every person in every bar in my city. Maybe I go to another city and try to find more people at the bar in the, my city, and none of them will pay me for this. It turns out that I am the only person who is interested in a, in a personal customer relationship manager for people that I meet at a bar. There went my business case. So this is why it's important to understand the context of the people that you're working with and the questions that you're solving for them, the problems that you're solving for them, so that you can actually develop a business case. Now, what's a business case? A business case starts with quantifying and defining your value proposition. What is the value that you're giving to people there? Well, the value in my case, right, is that you're able to keep track of a lot of people and their information, uh, so that you can enrich and develop those relationships in a better fashion. Right? That seems valuable. Now I just have to find the people who think that is valuable as well and who are willing to pay for it. Remember, uh, and I, this is a, a line from um, one of my favorite authors uh, at the MIT School of Entrepreneurship. He says, the only necessary and sufficient condition of a business is a paying customer. 
necessary as and sufficient. So let's see. Let's go back, I guess, then, taking my product that doesn't really work out for my, the uh, other non-nerdy people at the bar and take it back to the recruiting group. The recruiting group seemed to have some significant problems there that, I'm, that my product might be able to help them solve. So I go talk to a bunch of recruiters and they say, yes, this product makes it easier to transfer the things that I write down at the end of the day or at the end of the week from all of the contacts that I've gotten, from all of the business cards that I have into an easy to use system. In fact, that system's a whole lot easier than the one that I use at work and I wish I could have this one. And I say, oh, awesome, then why didn't you buy it? And they say, well, we, we, we can't buy it. We're, we're not the ones that buy it, somebody else buys it. You have to go talk to those people. So there's a process too, to taking your idea, mapping it to the actual person who pays for the product, particularly inside of the enterprise, and we'll, we'll get to that in the next step. And so there's a bit of a business model you have to design here. And you can do this on your own, you can do this, there's a lot of resources out there as well. There's some complexities that get in there from finance and things along those lines, but the core concept is you have a thing that now you've been able to prove solves somebody's problem and it's worth something to them. So all you're doing in this case is you're quantifying that value. How, how much is it? How often would you be willing to pay for this? You can test this as well in the same way that you had an iterative feedback loop for testing your product. What you're doing in this situation is you're testing your business model. Can I buy this? Is it worthwhile to you? Uh, how can I get it to you? You're not the one that makes the buying decision? Then maybe I can go talk to the person who does the buying at your recruiting firm. The other aspect to this business model too is, it's not just that you can build something that the customer wants and that will, they will pay for, you yourself have to be able to do it sustainably. It doesn't do you any good if it costs you $100 a month for every user on your app and you're only able to sell it for $10 a month. You'd be running a free thing and quickly be out of business. And so the business model planning around the product and, the, and the, uh, th that is a solution to your set of customer problems is a key feature to understanding how to bring an idea to light, how to bring a product to market, how to create a new business and satisfy that necessary and sufficient condition. Okay, up until this point, right? You could have taken all of these three steps and started your own company with it. I just did, right? I had my, my personal CRM. Because it's out in the world, you can go out and create a little company and, and do your own little business thing there. That's entrepreneurship. This talk about is about intrapreneurship. So what changes? What changes when you take that thing that we just described, these three steps, and you put it inside the enterprise? A few things. So let's paint the company canvas together here. First, you're inside a company that already does something. Let's say, for example, I, am, I run a burger company. We make burgers. Would a CRM tech product be a good thing for a burger company to jump into? Maybe. But you'd have to make the case to a different set of people internal to the burger company to explain that, yes, this is something that this burger company should do. It becomes a little bit constrained, right? Because instead of the world of possibility or the universe of possibility that you can launch a new company into, if you're launching something internally, you have to take the internal constraints into consideration as well. Well, what, what are your internal constraints? Unless you're at the top of the company, it's, you know, it can be hard to completely understand the internal constraints. And so this is where it's important to understand all of the internal stakeholders that you might have in bringing a particular idea forward as a new business or as a new product that you believe this company should pursue. How do you go about finding those? Well, it starts out with a number of conversations. First, your company might have recruiters. Why don't you take the idea that you have about, and again, we're going back to my uh, personal CRM, right? And say, hey, do you know what? I came up with this idea that I think might help our recruiting team in recruiting talent for our own company. They're a possible set of customers. This could be a homegrown solution to what they do. 
it can start out as an internal tool that provides value to individuals inside the company in their specific function that relates to a function that other people do in the outside world. It makes it a, a fairly straight uh, kind of dog fooding case, which we do a lot of here at, at Microsoft. Does it work for people internally? If it works for people internally, then there's a chance that it can work for people externally as well. How do I make it a business outside of the company though? I go talk to the people inside of my company who are already talking to my consumers, to my customers externally. They know what our customers expect of our company. They know what our consumers, what our, um, the people paying us expect out of our company and the things and, that we can bring them to help solve new problems for them. It's understanding those first and foremost, so that you have that new set of customers to take into account for bringing your idea to market. Second though, you notice I only had, when, when I was an entrepreneur, instead of this last step where I'm an entrepreneur, I only had to talk to myself to kind of think about decisions and talk to my customers. Here, unless you're the CEO of a company, and even then not the case, you still have to get buy-in, it's understanding all of the other people inside the company who have a vested interest in this idea, in this new business that you're bringing to market. Maybe, right, there's already a team internally that has a CRM that the recruiting, firm is uh, recruiting department is using, and your product proposes to disrupt them in some way. That'll make it a little more difficult, perhaps, to get your product to market unless you work with them and understand them as customers in some way, too, where you're seeing them as internal stakeholders that need to be brought in along the journey that you've just been on as to how this is a better product than the one that's currently internal. And this isn't a sort of thing where it's, you, you know, a, uh, a mine's better than yours sort of fashion, that new products are rarely brought to market in that way. It's a partnering with these other parts of the company that have the context of that enterprise, that have the context of that business, so that you are able to adapt your product not only to fit the needs of the customers outside the company, but also to fit the needs of the internal conditions that your company has already created. It's important to understand that broader company context, and it's important to understand those stakeholders too as customers. How do we tie this all together? Taking that individual idea, the thing that you came up with, the new product, the, the, the thing maybe that you've already built in some fashion in order to solve your own problem, does only that unless you start seeing the broader ecosystem of an application of your idea in solving customer problems that aren't your own. It's important to understand that you yourself aren't aren't your customer for almost all of the new ideas and products that you come up with. You're already a little too invested in it. You have a different lens on it than you need in order to bring something to market. So let's think through. Once you have that idea, your first step is to go find the customers that might also have a similar problem to yours and listen to them, empathize with them. Understand that problem so you can shape the insight that you've come to to fit their precise need. Two, understand that in the solving of that customer problem, you're going to be building a feedback loop so that the product can take shape in life over time in order to uh, completely meet the needs of the set of customers that you've identified. Three is building that business case. It's not just solving the problem for the customers, all of the other things that are, have to be considered along that, in that vein. Can you do it at the scale necessary? Can you do it at the quality necessary? Uh, can you do it at the price point necessary? Is it such that your overhead is, uh, will be too much for this particular situation? And then taking all of this inside the enterprise so that you, you understand the ecosystem of the new idea that you're bringing to market. You're understanding the different motivations of the players in the different departments of your company. You're being patient and understanding and bold in the bringing forward of this idea within the context of the enterprise. Thank you.